Oh, and Vance and Kaylin, I wanted to tell you that next year I want to join you for as a moderator for the multiliteracies. Oh, sure. So next year, Absolutely. yeah, okay, I was cool. thinking All I right. miss being a moderator. <laughs> so you could join us this year if you want. You could oh, add okay. you in. <laughs> My hands <laughs> full with being a coordinator, but yeah, I definitely want to. Oh, okay. But coordinating yeah. for the first time, so. Well, maybe on that note, uh, I just started the Illuminate recording. I had forgot to start it earlier, which is probably a good okay. thing. Uh, but um, this this is uh, not only a test run for the EVO session next week. This is the EVO kickoff session. That's what we're sort of testing here. This is January first, two thousand twelve. First time I've said that date, and I got it right. Um, so uh, we're here basically. We're combining learning together, which is uh, what we kind of do at this time every week on a Sunday, and. Um, and we're, we're doing it in a way that we're going to try the EVO kickoff next time, and that is we have a stream going. Jeff, I should say, give credit where credit is due, has a stream going at webheadsinaction.org slash live. And this place has a, a text chat that can hold us all together, plus it displays the video that's going on in the Hangout. But what we will we do next time, and, and also we've agreed with Scott to do this a, a week later on the 15th of January, we're going to have something interesting coming on. So for the next couple of learning togethers, we'll be here in the Hangout. Uh, that's our base. That's where we'll try to run people through. And we're also using Illuminate for people who can't get into the Hangout. And for people who can't get into Illuminate, we're using the Hangout. So the Illuminate, uh, the normal Illuminate session, this is being streamed in, into there uh, by virtue of, um, of Jeff again. Um, maybe you can tell us how he does it. Put it on the recording if you want, but uh, basically we're in these three places. So uh, Jen was asking, where is WebHeads going to be? And I don't know if you're talking about WebHeads.org or WebHeads in general, but WebHeads is everywhere. That's um, wherever it works. <laughs> so I don't know, does anybody have anything to add to that? <laughs> um, I was going to say yes, because sometimes they're in, we, we use tapped in to be chatting before they get to the Illuminate uh, and also we're using Yahoo connections uh, Skype as a backup so we have a lot of different ways to hopefully um, reach out to everybody the back channels and it also makes for good plan B's if something goes wrong you can jump to another system so it's good to be able to manipulate all of them well, yes, we have us. In, yeah, I'm, I'm in tapped in right now, so that is a fourth place, and Dave Wexler is there, and um, and Jeff is also hanging out there. But it's not a very active place these days. But these are the most active places. Right. And also for Skype, uh, we have uh, the Evo group, so we can make a call to everybody. How many people well, can you yeah. get in on that with the group Skype? Um, I don't think there's a limit now. There's a, I don't know we have, how many moderators we have. We have 14 sessions, and there's about three or four moderators for each session. Well, with of the course, free, not not yeah. all of them have showed up, <laughs> but <laughs> sure. yeah. with the free, you can only get one or two people at a time in a Skype. So you must have the paid account to do that to get so many people in at once. Um, but that's for video. You can have multiple people for just audio. The video, yeah, just, I think, is capped right. at 10 with the premium. All right, all right, so right. the Skype just audio is unlimited? Chatting. Yes. Really? Yeah, oh. and texting and audio, right. Yes. Yeah, not video, because <laughs> uh, some people don't uh, have that feature on their uh, web their laptops which we should also make um, uh, uh, let people know about who want to join the hangout next week they don't have to have video they can join a hangout without a webcam and we'll just mm -hmm. see the, the black space right I, I see what we're doing is pretty much what we do in Multiple literacy is that session that we're teaching. That's what, and Callian is my uh, co moderator, and Sam is, has been through the session. Uh, I think Scott joined us one time. Uh, yeah. yeah. Partially. So, uh, it, yeah, it's, it's basically a community. It's a learning community. It's not really a, a session so much or a course. It's something that 
promotes lifelong learning because it, it is, you know, it's just, uh, it's what we do. You know, uh, what Eric Duvall on, on a MOOC cast that Jeff recorded said, my whole life is a MOOC, you know. I just made a post on the web to that effect, but I, I really related to that statement. Um, but basically, that's, you know, that's what learning is all about. Learning is life, and that's what the multiple literacy session is. It's, um, I think it's something that we try to, I, I like the MOOC idea um, because it sort of promotes informal, you know, what it is what, uh, whatever you want, you know, whatever, whatever you think it is, it's whatever, it, that's, that's your learning, you know. So, um, all these spaces give us a chance to learn from one another. And um, so it, um, Callian is, happens to be uh, moderating this next session with me, and Sand just said she would like to moderate the one after that, which is just fine. She's more than welcome. And um, so, uh, Callian, what's, uh, how do you see, uh, you, you've got a, a conference coming up in India as well, so I was going to ask you, uh, you can uh, tell us how all this fits together. Uh, what are you doing these days? That was kind of a Paul Allison kind of question. <laughs> You're quite right. <laughs> I think our minds were alike. Oh yes, friends. <laughs> um, of course, um, I feel a bit embarrassed because of this background noise. Um, I must be Jeff must be laughing and wondering uh, what is happening. <laughs> I, I love the new the, the um, noise. It's perfect background for the web heads. Yeah, it's New Year's Day. Come <laughs> on, give us a break, you know. It's yes. so loud in some places. You can't avoid that. Happy New Year. <laughs> yeah. About uh, doing the course together came when Vans came to India. Uh, last year in June, and we met, and we met at Chennai, and uh, as it is quite natural for Vans, uh, we shared some ideas, and he said, "Why don't you come and join me for moderating this course because we have shared interests," and that's it, how it started. Now, I have a lesson from this. The lesson is very simple for me. That sharing today and working together is not barred by any circumstances today. Meaning, wherever you are, whatever is your profession, the only thing that you should have is, or you need to have is a kind of an increasing urge to contribute and to share. So I think the two words are now important and willingness to contribute and to share. Today, teaching learning is no longer like say, I have learned something and I'll keep it in a book and I'll not share with the community, I'll not share with anything. I'll have it in my head and I'll die with it. So that no longer exists. So, so for us, those who believe in that, we can come together and TESOL EVO is a perfect illustration of a community whose only point of interest is contributing to the professional development of teachers and sharing our ideas, practices, and also learning from each other. That's why, that's why it is a learning community, it is an inspiring community for me. That's very nice. Very well said. Yeah, I, I should say also that it began before I went to India, it began uh, my first uh, encounter with Kalyan came when he um, moderated one of the uh, EVO sessions, maybe a year or two ago, and that was the village, the uh, the Second Life Village session. So I, I real, realized Kalyan had uh, mutual interests, and I met him several times in Second Life. Uh, the Heike Felt was a moderator of that session. Um, so um, we had encounters there, and, and uh, that's a good place to meet like-minded, multiliterate people. So um, uh, there we are, and and Kalyan uh, is uh, quite active, and I'm active in Apical, Asia Pacific, Cal, uh, which is kind of based with Tom Robb and uh, um, Jongbei Son in uh, Japan, and 
Australia, respectively, and Kalyan is heading up, what is it called, India Cal? Tell us about that, Kalyan. And your conference that you're, that you're organizing, right? I read that on Facebook, that's how I know. You must have an audio problem. Uh, maybe, maybe, or no, I'm, I, it's not my mute, yeah. No, I <laughs> okay. hear you. Yeah, well, we'll ask him again. Yeah. No, I, I keep my microphone muted. Uh, oh. What Sorry so that is a webcast participant. <laughs> Less oh, of the background noise. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so so go ahead. So you can answer the question. Did you hear the question? I was asking you to tell us about uh, India Cal and uh, uh, the conference that you're organizing now. Yes, this is a conference which is uh, extensively supported by British Council and also IATFO. Um. The Learning Technology SIG did their first conference with English Language Teachers Association of India way back in 2007. Um, and after that, this is the conference that Learning Technology SIG is contributing. And it's starting on 7th of January, and we have the opening keynote speaker in the form of Sugata Mitra and Sugata Mitra is also from my own city Kolkata or Calcutta and currently he is in Calcutta because uh, he is spending his time with his family um, I, I think most of you have heard about his the whole in the wall experiment Of course, uh -huh. yeah. Well, I guess that's what Hangout is. Hangout is kind of a hole in the internet that people are kind of going to and just figuring out uh, what they can do with it. And it's sort of intuitive. No one needs a manual for it. Um, if it helps to have people like Jeff who are, um, you know, sort of pioneering uh, what you can do with it. And Jeff is often doing that. Uh, yes, he's I like good. your. I like your conversations with Dave uh, Cormier uh, in some of the MOOC casts where you, but, but of course you and Dave pioneered together this idea of going to, uh, you know, bringing the, the, the benefit, the, the uh, affordances of, of live conversations as opposed to presentations, you know. So you go to a presentation, you may or may not get much out of that. But um, when you talk to people, that's really where we learn, you know. So, uh, um, yeah, I mean, I find like, conversations so much more interesting than lectures generally, and sharing it online is kind of simulating the conference experience. You're at a conference and you talk to someone, you, you overhear a conversation, you introduce someone, it's a, it's a public event, and it, it tends to broaden and make the conversation much more rich, I think. Um, I wonder, you know, we have Dave Wexler has joined us in uh, Illuminate, and suppose Dave were a moderator who, I, I think he could come to the Hangout, but he just happens to be in Illuminate right now. What if he were a moderator who was going to present to us from Illuminate? Uh, how would he do that? I could endeavor to do that as is, but it would be messy and problematic. What I think would work better is to say, okay, for those who aren't able to get in the Hangout, um, everyone in the Hangout done, close the Hangout. Now everyone go to the Illuminate. Mm, okay. And then I will just simulcast that. And it could, to, ah. to try to bridge it mm -hmm. is doable, but uh, there's gotcha. enough chaos okay. going on. Um, so I would... I, more chaos. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be more real-time troubleshooting hassle than it's worth to try to bridge them at the same time in terms of input. So do you have a yeah, list okay. of the people who are going to do Illuminate? So that'll come at the end, as you just suggested. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, no, we do not yet. I have a Google document that, I, uh, that Vance shared that has people's Gmail addresses, and perhaps we can 
um, add a section for uh, okay I can't do the hangout I'll do it in uh, illuminate and I'll toss that into the okay. assorted chats. Another uh, another hypothetical question then. Uh, they or, there we go. You put the link to um, to hang out there because I would anticipate that some moderators might come late, like Dave has, for example, and not really know how to get into the Google Chat. Maybe they haven't filled in the form, but they maybe they'll try getting into the Google Chat. So if you pop, if, if Dave, if you try to click on that link and see if you can get in here, then then we can find out. I mean, we can't really make a list of moderators until we see what they do. You know, so some people don't know; they won't know until the day that they can't get into the hangout and. And you know what would be super helpful for me? To have a couple of people who are just kind of focused on that during the, the webcast. So rather than me saying, oh, uh, John, you can't get in, uh, and then kind of disrupt the whole yeah. conversation. If there are people there who say, oh, you want to join the Hangout? Here's the guide. Post your Gmail address here. Um, and those people can kind of be back channeling me, oh, this person wants to join bring him in. But do they do they have to post their Gmail address if they can click on that link? I mean, Dave, Dave Wexler, for example, hasn't posted in his Gmail address, but if he can reach the link in this and The way, link will bring you right in, won't it? Yes, but everyone here was invited. Uh, this is not a public hangout. Uh. And my, my reason for not doing that is once it's a public hangout, you can get it. Hey, man, uh, what y'all doing? Yeah. We've done that. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Bad enough, the people we got already, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the people we, we have enough who don't know what they're doing. You're right. <laughs> but I clicked okay, the so, link that you sent out, so I wasn't technically invited. Yes, you were. Oh, that link was the invitation. Okay. I, I had it, so, No, I had so, invited you prior to sending you that link. Oh, okay. Do you, do you see David's uh, email address in the, in the Illuminate? In Illuminate chat? Yes, I do. David dot Wexler. Yeah, so you can and invite him. Actually, before I, I'm going to go ahead and invite you, David, but I'm, I, I want to double check to see if you can get in without the invite. So here's the Google Plus link. Oh, sorry, wrong place. <laughs> do have a few chat rooms going here. Um, <laughs> uh, let me know if you can join the Hangout or what kind of message you get. Uh, and as soon as you let me know that, I will actually invite yeah. you. Yeah, because this is all dry run testing to see what's going to happen one week from today when we go sh live showtime. All the pressure is on. All the moderators got to shine, you know. That sort of thing. Ah, I was just talking off the top of my head there. I don't know. Fan Vance, how many participants do you anticipate? Any idea? Next week? Well, yes. how, how many moderators do we have, Sam? Oh, so it's 10 per moderator? Is that how you're kind of judging it or what? There's 14, uh, yeah, and there's 14 sessions, so we'll probably have one person speak for each session. So. And it's okay if all the moderators want to come in. If everyone wants to come to the Hangout and talk about their session and whatever, that's, that's okay, too. Are you running away, Sandra? Yes. I was gonna <laughs> go get something to eat. I'll be right back. Okay. So, okay. I was going to exit. <laughs> it's breakfast time now. Feel free to come yeah, back and join I mean, us for breakfast. Even. I don't want to eat in front of you guys. So. <laughs> and, and to answer Dave's question and illuminate, that's how we're going to handle, that's how we, we keep it to 10. Uh, we're going to, uh, people will leave and we'll rotate people through. So uh, people who are not actually uh, hanging out for all that time, and maybe people don't want to do that. Maybe they just they want to have breakfast, you know, with their families or whatever, because it's different time zones and different places. So um, they can uh, put the stream on and monitor the proceedings that way, or they can. Uh, um, and to answer the question of how many people we get, oh, good. So he can get in. Oh, okay. So now we know how it's done. Yeah. Boy, you got a lot of backlight there, David. And pull those curtains. He's an angel. Yeah. <laughs> got that right. <laughs> <laughs> you got a halo. There you go. Oh, stop. I'm turning around. Turning around. Yeah. Going in the bathroom. Going in the bathroom. <laughs> Turn off the lights. <laughs> All right. No, that's cool. Sorry, I'll top, stop talking until I get a headset. 
hook them horns. Yeah, oh, you can you can always mute. Good idea to mute. And we we can mute people, can we? Yeah, anybody uh, can yeah. mute anybody. Yeah. Mute me. Uh, <laughs> how do you do that? Oh. Oh, I see. Yes. I you see mouse you over their to... little thumbnail thing. I just mute. Don't you mouse over my. You have to nails. click. You have to click twice. You have to press uh, the little thing under them, and then a little pop-up uh -huh. will happen at the top of the Hangout. Once or twice. Oh, oh I see. Oh, I got you. Yeah, it says mute now. Okay, so, okay. Well, what, okay, I'll, I'll mute Dave right now. Okay, I'm, I muted him, so when you put a headset on, we'll bring you back, or, or you can unmute yourself, too. You've got a little... Uh, That's the thing. You can't unmute him. Only he can unmute himself. Ah, okay. Well, we're learning how this works. Okay, so forgive me, Dave. I muted you. Now you have to <laughs> unmute yourself. <laughs> I thought I had the power to undo my action there. Took um, care of the echo, though. You did. And well, I wanted to confirm. This is Dave Wexler, who some of you may know that I'm involved in using the internet creatively in education with a focus on math education. Cool. I just want to make sure that's the right Dave Wexler before I add you to the circle. I was a chemistry that major in right. college Dave because math was know. hard. No, no, I think it is. He's he's a math. He's in the he's math. math dude. But yeah. we he doesn't know to unmute himself. I could tell. Uh -oh. Dave, do you know how to unmute yourself? Find your we're thrown microphone off icon. the island. <laughs> now we gotta let you back on. Microphone icon down there. Reach for the light. Yeah, make it, uh, click on the microphone icon and make, put, make it go from red to green. Red to green. There you go. Yeah, you got it. Okay, beam, beam him up. Okay, he's beamed. Cool, <laughs> beam yourself here. So, uh, Kalyan, I think what we're doing right now is basically talking, all this is talking about our multiliteracies course. Because this is this is what multiple literacies course is. It's it, it's planned in the sense in like a MOOC. It's it's got the um, you know it's got readings and things like that. It looks like a course, uh, but um, it's uh, it's it's a course where people just do their thing and they learn that way. It's really about embracing um, the chaos. Yes, yes. I like Sue's Nyrop's uh, classic chaos navigation to describe webheads. That's, that was her first impression. She said. WebEds was chaos navigation, and then when she got to know it a little bit longer, she said it was intuitive chaos navigation. So you know, I think I of like a I, I think of a MUC as a as an authentic, pure, in um, truth seeking uh, experience because there's no benefits to it other than learning. So you know, we're all here for the one thing, which is truth seeking, right? Up until yeah. we start charging or giving awards for MOOC. That's behaviors. true. It's, it's very much about the uh, intrinsic motivation. You know, there there aren't the extrinsic. You're not getting grades or money or any reward other than learning itself. Mm -hmm. That's what I like about it. But very anyway, satisfying. for for next week, will one of the sessions deal with persistence and motivation? I think that would be a very interesting topic. Do you know? Well, you could join the multi literacy section session, and you could drive it that way, just like you would a MOOC. Oh, okay, okay. Elicit that yeah. from the, the the community. Okay. Mm -hmm. And to answer Dave's question, I love Google Plus Hangouts, uh, as opposed to Skype. I find it works. I find the audio and the video are better, more reliable. I like the fact that it's free for a ten person video chat. Uh, I like the integration it has with Google products. I like the fact that you can do screen sharing with Google Hangout with extras. Um, so yes, I do. And I find it much lighter. The, the one drawback for normal people is that they can't record it. But you overcome that, Jeff. How do you do that? I, I, I know you've told us before, but run it. Just test this one more time. See if you can explain. And, and that's the it's thing. Like, times. you know, the whole webcasting thing is kind of hard. Um, oh, I want to record this. All right, I'll, I'll show you. Well, I've heard that they're about to roll out the feature that you can record it and post it to YouTube, and that should be within the next several months. Wow. Right? Yeah. Jeff is probably aware of that and might what have more I information on it. That they are... Did my audio get really low? Uh, we hear you. No, yeah. it was fine. 
um, that um, they're going to roll it out for selected users, uh, not only the recording, but also streaming live on YouTube. Uh, yes. So they'll roll it out for a few in the beginning, and then uh, eventually they'll hopefully make it a either available to everybody or a premium feature. Uh, the recording it, there's really three components necessary. One is this program, are you all see? Yeah, this is Manicam. Uh, this is a screen capture tool. So it says, okay, I want you to capture this part of my screen. Uh, the next part is Screencast-O-Matic. There are a number of these sites that let you to record your screen, screener, screen, screen jelly died, I think, but Camtasia works as well. Uh, so this is yeah, online. I'm using Camtasia now. I just started with Camtasia. Oh, is oh it you a, see me two a, times. A recent version of Camtasia? Yes. I mean, how come I'm here twice? Uh, there's because only one of me. I don't have. Any. I changed my my Hangout video source from my webcam to my ManyCam, and so ManyCam is capturing this Hangout area. I choose what part of the screen I want to capture. And you can choose a really small portion or a larger portion. So what I do is say, okay, I want you to capture this hangout portion of my screen. Uh, and so that's what's being fed into screen quarter, uh, available step by step. Well, okay. I'm trying Apple too. You know, should that work? Uh, Apple should work. Camtasia should have <laughs> built-in support. The, the challenging part of this is capturing both ends of the conversation. Uh, so, like normally when you record, you can either capture your microphone or you can capture um, everything that everyone else is saying. The challenging Jeff, part. You live stream. <clears throat> I'm sorry? Have you used live stream? I have. That was kind of my default streaming tool uh, until recently. Uh, and it works pretty well. Uh, the reason I've switched to something else is that uh, it had ads and that was annoying people and I heard about this other solution that lets you stream without ads and so that's what I'm using now. But live stream works well. The entire Educon conferences, um, the next one is at the end of January at a school in Philadelphia. <clears throat> the students at this high school um, stream all of the sessions, record the sessions as they're being streamed, and it, I think it works pretty well for them, but, you know, there's lots of solutions. They're awesome, Educon. They were one of the first conferences, and still one of the only conferences I've seen, that stream every presentation. They put a kid in a camera in every presentation room. They've got, tw they used to use Ustream, maybe they switched to Livestream, and I feel like they are, and they were doing that in like 2008. I think the very first Educon they did that. So they've been ahead of the curve. And I mean, what a great conference that is. Yay, Chris Lehman. Who, who's the guy driving Educon? There's somebody uh, who's Chris Lehman. Should know. Yes, Chris Lehman. Uh, yeah. So that's in Philadelphia. It will be in Philadelphia, TESOL, uh, this, come, this year. It'll be in March. I'll, I'll be in Philadelphia. Uh, is Joyce Valenza there, or is it somebody? Somebody's there that. that Joyce is in Philadelphia. Yes. In Joyce is in Montgomery County, yeah. um, but I'd be happy yeah. to take you to the school, Vance, if you want to go. Mm -hmm. mm, okay, sure. That'd be really cool to touch base with these people. I would love that. Yeah. Okay, I'll see if I can leave some time for that. I might have some control over my over the days I take off and that sort of stuff. So yeah, so are you going to be in Philadelphia as well, David? Because I know David. Uh, I'm doing a session at Educon, and I hope to meet uh -huh. some of you guys in or outside of the convention center at TESOL. Ah, okay. Uh, but your presentation at Educon is in January, and TESOL is in March. Yeah, it's like the end of this month. They call them conversations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So you're going to come to TESOL as well in Philadelphia? Well, you know, it's sort of my second home, so whether I actually pay to get into the conference or not. <laughs> mm. Oh, okay. Well, we have these after-hours sessions, if you know any... Uh, that's that's the way to do a TESOL conference. Forget about after the... After-hours session. 
Well, um, yeah, so uh, ostensibly this was uh, supposed to be a, a conversation between Callian and I kicking off our multiple literacy session, but I think this is kind of what we're doing, I and mean, this is a good kickoff. You think so, Callian? Yes, I learned I learned a lot. I learned how yes. to yes. problem solve and... Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, definitely, and that's the conversation all about. For example, the and I guess the multiliteracy course is something which is uh, not prescriptive. Uh, it's something that we are going, uh, going together, going to learn together. It's not that with a set of mind the teacher comes in the class and then uh, everything goes along the line. It's not like that. Life is never like that. And so learning is never like that. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Well put. And I'm not sure if this is a subset of multi-literacies or not, but the whole multitasking thing gets talked about a lot. Not, never more so than during an EVO launch webcast, <laughs> where you have a whole bunch of different environments and different tools and people using it for the first time. Uh, if you all have any words of wisdom to share as far as how to ease the pain for those who are going to be overwhelmed next Sunday, I'm all ears. Oh. Yeah, I think that's what we were sort of testing out. We were sort of doing a dress rehearsal here to see how it might go, and David has been very uh, helpful in helping us test out the, in the role of a moderator. Obviously, they're going to be computer literate, or they wouldn't be moderating an online course, so, um, you know, they, people can be talked in. And I guess the only drawback is going to be if somebody doesn't have a Google ID. Can't really assume that for everybody. Right. You know, you should Twitter that a couple no, I, of times. I, I, I think... Twitter what? Uh, the fact that if they want to participate, a Google ID is something they want to do. I don't know yeah. if I don't know if that's a good place to reach the audience, but Twitter is a to, for me. I have Google Plus contact with someone from almost every session, and in fact, I have. I can show you the list of people I don't have Gmail addresses for. Um, so, because I, I went to Google Plus and tried to find as many moderators as possible. And, uh, maybe I'll, I'll send the moderators or Vance this list. There are less than 10 people that I don't from all the moderators. Um, and I, I think it probably will help to kind of send people to a central location, which I think is going to be webheadsinaction.org is the, the easiest place. Um, I, I don't want to tweet out the Hangout address because people are going to start saying, oh, okay, I'll join a Hangout. Like that's always a confusing, confusing thing. Uh, and so you get people popping in thinking this is how they, they tune in. Um, so making it clear to tune in here when it's your turn to join in will bring you in or make contact. Yeah, this, this is really simplified because there's a, they're, they're all on a, an email list, they're on a Yahoo group list, so we, we can just communicate with them that way, you know, privately, directly, we don't have to <coughs> use Twitter. So we'll give them the, the instructions. Well, probably, uh, and, and I, uh, it's something like I posted to Learning Together for this week. But I think for next week, we'll make something uh, a little bit more directed. Uh, now that we know a bit more about it and, and how it's going to work, it's been very helpful. So um, looks like we've got a, another couple of weeks, this week and the one after. Uh, uh, Scott's uh, offered to involve Alan Levine, if it's possible, if he's free, uh, to try to do his pitch cut. Pitch. Petra Flicker. Petra Flicker. I don't Petra know if we can get him in that Flicker. early. But. Are you open to a different time for that, Vance? Sure. I'm probably not. This is about the best time for me during the week. Mm. Well, what about this time exactly? This this time right now. Is this a yeah. good time? That's yes. 1400 GMT. Indeed. Is that what you're talking about, Jeff? Uh, that or I was thinking time? the other side of the day. Uh, your... Although you, you're hard, you're sort of 
I've, I've got a job now where I can't really get online. Yeah, those and work. day jobs, they get uh, in the way. I, yeah, it's a little pain. I, I think we just skip the whole day job thing and just hang out online all the time. But it's a, it's open a virtual supermarket where I could sustain myself. I'd probably work for me, you know. You got to write an ebook. Sell the ebooks. That's <laughs> where the money is. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Sell ebooks? I thought you just posted them and people just scarf them up online. Well, that's one model. The other model is to sell them, make lots of money. Do you know people who've made a lot of money with ebooks? Well, <laughs> that you didn't read about my, my plan, on my plan is not perfect. <laughs> this is stage one. Some well, people. I've, I've read some really good ebooks. Let's see, I read, for example, uh, oh, uh, Dor uh, uh, Lawrence Lessig's remix, and it's all about sharing online content and copyright. And and I read the book on the Kindle, and I had to pay for it on the Kindle. Exactly. And I think lately I went though and Googled it, and I found out that he's actually put it out as an ebook, a free ebook, which, you know, that's like putting your money where your mouth is, or, or, you know, no money where your mouth is, and that's exactly the the the, the conflict with, um, or the dichotomy in you know, sharing open open content is that you know you don't get paid for it, or it should be available. I mean, or or you can find a model where. Uh, like some of these books, for example, they have ISBN numbers. Uh, you can buy one if you want. You can buy a, or maybe something you read and you decide to give it to someone for Christmas. So you go down to the bookstore and buy it and hand it over. You know, kind of like um, you know, you're listening to rock music uh, free, but you go into the concerts, you buy tickets, and you uh, buy some paraphernalia when you're there, that sort of thing. So. Um, you know, there's there's an economy that's, or or, or like uh, Stephen Down says, content is free. So. If you if you follow that precept, con content is free. It, you got to make money on something other than the content itself. So, uh, Scott, have you made your video of the day? Yes. Yeah. So we're uh, forty days running straight. Gonna keep it going. The daily updates. So, what are you? Tell us about that, Scott. What are you doing? I am doing every day. I'm doing a 30-second recording where I point the camera either at myself or at something in Tokyo, and I give a status report of the time, the temperature, and the uh, daily rating on a scale of one to ten. And each day the rubric changes, so it's just a little bit of fun. It's a YouTube channel, and it uh, keeps me busy, draws traffic to my site, and it's fun. Um, what's the address of the site? This is it. Sorry, you, you put the it YouTube your channel YouTube is Scott Low Radio. Oh, Jeff just put one on there. Uh -huh, chat. Okay. And then my blog, my website is scottlow.com. Yeah, I've I've got a blog post in my head from some things I've been listening to, and it's it's called uh, Digi Digital Stories about Digital Stories. And um, let's see, where do the um, one of them is there's some guy who's been trailed by the FBI or, or sorry by the CIA or some homeland security problem. They they called him in. They wanted to Here's know where he was. Update he decided that since he had nothing to hide, uh, he would Time. just start sending them information. So he started documenting his life and he started just inundating them with updates all the time. I was here. I did this. You know, just sending the stuff off to them. And uh, so that's one digital story about a digital story. And there's another guy who records. Uh, catalogs things he does like number of heads of lettuce eaten and he just kind of catalogs mm -hmm. this stuff and it's kind of like a, a Roush painting where you know you just red brush strokes all over a huge canvas and if you stare at this thing you wonder well you know someone actually did this you know that and you're impressed just by the prolific uh, effort uh, you know so uh, he, he also made a uh, this guy has a name and a website he's well known in this uh, kind of but but he, he did something on the life of his father in the same way. His father died, and he, he cataloged all these remembrances. Mm -hmm. I saw something else on uh, uh, BBC that someone, I'll, I'll try to dig this out if I can Google it somewhere or find it. But anyway, so somebody who has digitized, it was a click online episode where someone digitized his past. He, well, he got lots of photos and uh, things that were disintegrating and, and had them all digitized, but the process of having them do that was uh, kind of interesting uh, and, and not at all straightforward.
But uh, so I'm just thinking about you know how uh, this ties into a pattern. There are a lot of people doing this, you know, sort of uh, digital stories of your own story. Goodbye, Nina. Which is Bye bye, Nina. That's a fascinating thing. For me, I did it kind of as a lark, and I was sort of being snarky at all of the people who want to be YouTube celebrities. But I got feedback from people saying, This is sublime. I don't think it's sublime, but that's what they said because mm -hmm. you're just capturing a moment each day. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't thinking of it that way. Another person said, It's like a, uh, like a, almost like a time machine. Like I'm instantly getting transported to Tokyo where you are and 30 seconds is just about enough time. Anything more mm -hmm. and it does become boring. So I'm not mm -hmm. trying to see if there's anything deep to it but it's just a lot of fun for me. And just thinking about mm -hmm. the shot, trying to capture 30 seconds of visual is a nice... Yeah. There's no money in it. But... Yeah, well, there are. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's art. Yeah. Thanks, David. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Of course, Alan Levine is known for his digital stories. His, what is he up to? He started with 50. He must be up to 100 oh. now. The ways to tell digital story. Well, he'll be teaching the DS106 this semester, along with uh, Jim Groom and myself and another person. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, Alan is an inspiration to a lot of people. Hmm. Brewster Kale. I've heard that name, but I don't know anything about it. Can you fill us in, David? That's an, that's an old name, isn't it? Brewster Kale? I don't think he's an old guy, but he was very interested in how do you generate the history of the internet, you know, since things are changing so fast. So I will find you a link. Is that, is that I just the found web, the Wikipedia. The way back machine? Yeah. He was on Democracy Now! a few months ago. Yeah. Okay. Um, so my internet poster child is a former sixth grader from Minnesota, <laughs> one of the early schools. Um, she's 30 now. <laughs> but the photo, I'll give you the link, um, was her as a triplet. And these kids wrote very simple web pages in 1993, and you showed them to teachers, and these three very cute babies, you know, who are all identical except for the socks. Um, the whole point being, if a sixth grader can do this, you know, it's not that hard. But that um, server doesn't exist anymore, but the data from it is stored on the Internet Archive. So I can still get to it. Oh, I've, I've used that. Uh, somebody put up one of my uh, something I wrote, and uh, I it, it went offline. You know, the, 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 I think the, it was Tim Johns had something on his website, something I wrote, and uh, it disappeared because Tim disappeared. <laughs> he died, so um, uh, the site went down. I went to retrieve it. Of course, I got it off the Wayback Machine Internet Archive. So that's a yes, just in time. Okay, um, I didn't say anything to the moderators about when they should come here today. Uh, I guess the session is sort of officially, we've gone beyond our time. But uh, anyway, Marianne, glad, good to see you. How's your mic working? Hi. <laughs> Hello. Welcome I've to 2012. Thank you. Happy New Year. <laughs> Same to you all. I've been following the conversation a little. Yeah, were um, you in the stream? But now that I click something, I'm... What's happening I'm, is you're still listening to the stream. And so yes. if you're in the Illuminate, you need to mute the Illuminate. Okay. I don't see a mute button. I see a volume button. Uh, if you scroll all the way left, it'll mute it. Uh, is it is it the microphone? No, it would be the speaker. The speaker just. Um, I think that no, I don't hear the. Um, I don't no, hear you. Bottom. I don't hear you twice now. I, I, 
I ran the audio all the way over to the left. Okay, that should do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, well, we hear you fine. Hmm. We hear you fine. The audio is a little bit scratchy for me, and it's that kind of scratchy that I used to get when I was in Illuminate and somewhere else. I, I, I get the feeling your system might be... Um, have some sort of little audio scratchiness going, but we can certainly hear you fine. Um, I have one simple question. Um, what is the relationship between um, Google ha Google Talk Hangout and Google Plus? Google Hangout is a component of Google Plus. It is uh, just one of the features they offer. Uh, it's kind of an alternative to Skype in the sense that you have this kind of, you know, audio and video chat. Uh, there's also a version that allows you to do screen sharing as well. Thank you. Um, I looked at all of the uh, EBO offerings and plan to uh, follow a few um, and sign up right away tomorrow. Um, but I didn't see that in the syllabi any of them um, were touching on Google Plus, and I'd really like to learn more about how to use it. <laughs> Any suggestions? Well, you, uh, in multiple literacies, you can always drive the session that way. Uh, uh, we'd be happy to address it. Um, maybe I should build it into the syllabus. That's I actually hadn't hadn't occurred to me. Uh, Callia, maybe we could uh, do a little uh, Google Plus. I that's I've got a. I think I started a, a scoop it on Google Plus at one time. I could really look back at that. And Google Plus is sort of something uh, some of us are sort of taking for granted now. I think it, it was a, sort of took the world by storm there for uh, an internet time about five seconds, and then uh, um, now we're sort of taking it as intuitive. But yeah, you're right. It's something we should you know talk about. Well, that would be very helpful because. Um, for all of you, it's probably intuitive, but my problem is I don't have other people who um, who use it, so I have nobody to play with, you know. <laughs> so I I can't get to be familiar with it if I don't have anybody to play with. <laughs> it's kind of a Facebook surrogate, so uh, you can you, you'll notice if you use it. I, I just noticed that Sam is uh, adding uh, us to her circles, and she's made an educator circle. And no one sees your circles uh, except for you. You don't know, uh, they don't know. I mean, if I'm added to Sandra's circle, I have no idea what she's doing. But what she's doing is she's setting up her own group in Google Plus that's particular to her. And like Jeff uses it, for example, um, he, he wants to invite people to this Hangout. He has a circle of people who are associated with this Hangout, which apparently everybody but me is on. But anyway, that's his You're there now, idea. along with Marianne. <laughs> Oh, that's nice. Okay, yeah. So uh, he so what he can do is when he wants to share a hangout link, he can share it to that particular circle. So that's where it's handy. Uh, but but no one else sees that circle but him. Uh, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, but it's kind of, it's kind of nice. It's a nice interface. If you go to Google Plus and you you can check out what your circles are doing. But, uh, you know, it's kind of like Facebook in a way. Um, well. I hate Facebook <laughs> because most of the things on there are social rather than professional. But um, well, it depends on how you how you who your friends are. I mean, my, a lot of true. my friends, my special friends are in Facebook, so I get a lot of information that way as well. I'll have to try that one too. Um, I added you all to a circle I called Techies, but now because that was the first thing that popped in my mind. Will I be able to tell when you are doing something? You can't tell, you, you just mentioned, you can't tell that I've put you in a circle. But can I tell when you are doing something online? We know that you've put us in a circle. We don't know which circle, and we can't see your circles. And as okay. soon as you put us in one of your circles, or as soon as we put you in one of our circles, we will see what you do. And if you put us in one of your circles, you will see what we do. Yeah, kind of like Facebook. We'll see our updates and things like that. Okay. But you will know that we've put you back in a circle. 
You understand? So that just you're putting us in a circle doesn't mean that we'll know what you're doing until we reciprocate. Correct, Correct Jeff. Right. Okay. Okay, well, I don't want to turn this into a session of uh, tutoring for Marianne, so please continue your own discussions. <laughs> no problem. I'm expecting a visit from my son and uh, his lady friend any moment. Jeff is nodding in knowing agreement. As, as the day job beckons. Yes, there you are. So the day job, Jeff, it's all, oh, the day, day job. Well, as in having to sleep. prepare and go sleep and get ready for the day yeah. job. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Well, okay. Uh, Kalyan, thanks a lot for uh, accepting the invitation to come and talk about the multiple literacies course, which we've done. <laughs> and we're sort of, and, and David, really nice for you to show up. Nice to see you again. Um, I met David in New York when I went to a TESOL conference there, and he picked me up at the airport. And Scott, very good to see you, as usual. We'll see, you see you in two, in two weeks. weeks. Yeah. Two weeks for the Petcha Flicka. Not next week. Yeah, okay, cool. All right. Uh, well, this has been great. Um, I will probably try to schedule one more Hangout practice session. I feel like for, for people who might be joining it, it just it helps to, to try this out. I think I'll schedule it at a more North American friendly t or North and South American friendly time. Um, uh, perhaps like uh, midnight GMT-ish. Um, but I'll touch base with you about that, Vance. Yeah, okay, fine. Uh, I, I might mention for the Learning Together recording, as I always do, that this is January 1st, 2012, and this is uh, partly part a hangout, part a cool cast. This is a cool cast for sure, and it's part a Learning Together event, and a Webheads thing, and part EVO, Electronic Village Online. So we're converging all these uh, literacies. online convergences, all these literacies, and, and, and you know, networks and uh, that sort of thing, communities. So well, thank you very much for everyone for coming. And I'm going to be disappearing shortly. And if you're in the Illuminate chat, you need to exit from there in order for the recording to be preserved. So um, and if you don't do that, I'll just remove you gently. All right. Thanks, Michael. everybody. Have a great week. We'll uh, see you for the big event next week, if not before. Yeah. Bye-bye. Thank you.